So what's going on everyone? My name is Matt and you're watching Demo Reel. Now this video is going to be a little bit different. Originally, I was going to premiere a film called White by Francis Russell. And Francis and I were both super excited about it. We shot our interview, we scheduled it and everything like that. But when I uploaded the film, YouTube wouldn't allow it to be shown due to copyright reasons that I won't even bother getting into. But the truth is guys, I loved Francis's film and I think it and she deserves all the attention and promotion that they can get. So I decided to upload the interview anyway. Now the film itself is still available for viewing on Francis's Vimeo page. Real talk, I'm a little bit salty that Vimeo allows it to be shown but YouTube doesn't, but whatever. So I'm going to be linking to that Vimeo page for you guys to watch the film. And that's all you really need to know guys, so without further ado, here's my interview with Francis Russell. So what's going on everyone? My name is Matt and you're watching Demo Reel. And yesterday we premiered White by Ms. Francis Russell. Francis, how you doing today? Hi. I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you for taking the time to chat with me. Now, now guys, we're really going to be talking about our film, so if you haven't seen it yet, leave now and go watch it. I'll put a link to it somewhere on this video, but you've been warned, if you're still here, we're going to get into it. So, Francis, to start off with maybe the most cliched question in yes. all of film, what was the inspiration for this film? The inspiration for this film was millennials doing way too many drugs, especially cocaine. Oh, uh, really? Yes. <laughs> do you, I'm almost afraid to ask this, but do you, do you have experience with that, that kind of thing? Um, I have some minor experience. I've mm. seen friends right. who right. have done uh, cocaine, Got and it. it's been pretty... It's pretty much wrecked me to see a lot of very potential filled mm. young people yeah. um, channel so much energy into this drug. Mm. Uh, so I wrote something about it. Originally it was about another social issue. Yeah. And so that seems like that's the path I'm going down. Got it. Uh, addressing social issues and experimental ways sort of like White does, mm -hmm. but also I'd like a narrative, a loose narrative. Yeah, of uh, I like, I like French films. Mm. So that was a very big uh, influence. I'm sorry, I'm saying that so much. That was a very big influence yeah. to me. Got it. For how to capture a very beautiful image mm. around something that could be loosely interpreted. Yeah, for sure. So I mean. From what I'm getting is, this was a very personal project for you, right? Yes. Yes, it was. Got it. So, I originally wrote the story about uh, a young woman who is a photographer who mm -hmm. goes blind after getting debris in her eye after a building collapses. Mm, and yeah. her sister comes to her in the end, and it's almost a bit fantastical because she can only see her sister. Mm, interesting. So, yes, yes. Mm. So I kind of made that a little less fantastical with the cocaine mm -hmm. and it being such a, I mean, dare I say spectacular drug. I have not tried it, <laughs> but... <laughs> full disclosure. Full disclosure, but I've seen just like complete transformation mm. from the research that I did do asking people questions yeah, um, yeah. before shooting the film to make sure that I was directing something that I was at least aware of its impact on people who would be watching it would yeah, be. Sure. Uh, I have, I don't know, just a great shift in personality mm. comes out of doing the drug. Got it. Um, and I feel like I also reached a very sweet spot in our history right now when it comes to legalizing drugs and right. dealing with drugs. Yeah. Uh, I wrote this in 2015, 2016, but mm -hmm. now it's 2018 and we are <laughs> dealing with legalization right. and uh, a possibly cokehead president. So, yeah. you know, just little things like that is kind of crazy mm -hmm. that we we're addressing that yeah. we're still adjusting to these things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, this film ended up being something very different than what you intended. Can you talk a little bit more about your thought process in that? Like, how did it become from a blind photographer to mm -hmm. someone 
dealing with the loss of their family in yes. not a healthy way. Yes. Well, I would say... <laughs> I would say that the film's title itself, uh, White with the Red Period, it's mm-hmm. a euphemism for white girl, which is mm-hmm. another name for cocaine. Got and it. while that is more of an artistic choice that I chose in editing, mm-hmm. it kind of summed up everything I was really trying to touch mm. upon. Superficially, albeit, but I was trying to at least point out the connection between all of these things. Yeah, of course. Yes, for you guys who've probably just seen it, you've seen the dynamic between the black party girl and the white lead actress. Uh, Their names are Tanya Maria McFarlane and Callie McDermott, both amazing actresses. Uh, You saw the dynamic that they had with the drug. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, we're young folks, and it's 2018, so I think that we should, if we want to heal a social issue, then we should talk about the dynamics between taking drugs in public and how there is a racial relation, the fact that we even say white girl wasted, Mm -hmm. or we call cocaine white girl. Yeah. And the the real uh, impact that it has on not only our culture as a whole, Mm -hmm. as Americans, but the different races in America. Got it. Um... And how outdated even saying that it's a racial issue is, Mm. dare I say, uh, because, I mean, the family and the story is multiracial. Right, right. Um, I've seen multiracial families have to deal with, like, strange dynamics. Even, I mean, if your husband is white or black or your wife is Hispanic or Asian, there's still this very strange tension there um, that is that superficial. Is like, yeah, like there's... And maybe over-embellished uh, at points, and it leads you to sort of lose focus mm. of the bigger picture mm. at times. Yeah, I can understand that. Yep. Mm. So, Francis, you've kind of alluded to this a little bit, but or at least this idea that, you know, we're kind of talking about legalization of drugs and everything like that. You know, what would you say to people who might look at this film and think you're making some sort of statement? People might say, like, oh, well, people should make their own choices. You know, it's, you know, if they're not smart enough to handle it, they shouldn't be doing it. It doesn't mean the rest of us should suffer or anything like that. You know, how would you respond to that? I would respond that you should proceed with uh, the best tools that you have. Mm -hmm. If you know that you shouldn't be around a certain group of people. Right. Um, or you just don't feel right, no matter what you're doing, you don't Mm -hmm. feel right in the situation, chances are that you could be channeling your energy to do something more useful with your life. Mm -hmm. Um, this is not knowledge for when you're older, this is not knowledge for, for the more wise to give you, you are your own person. Um, Absolutely. And if we're going to solve some big issues, like people overdosing on cocaine and it being just a thing, like, it's just it's so sad. Yeah. Uh, we're still dealing with that. Then we need to really think about the little choices that we're making. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there are other drugs that are considered more harmful, I'm sure. Yeah. But still, <laughs> it's the little choices that matter. Exactly. Yeah. So... You have kind of talked about this a little bit, but what were what were some of the challenges you faced with making this film? Whether they be, you know, mental, technical, anything like that, you know? It was very frustrating making this film. Um, I originally did not name it White. Mm-hmm. That was something I did in editing. So it was frustrating for me and my crew afterwards, or at least my crew was frustrated at me for naming it White Red Period. Uh, but Really? Why? I, I felt frustration, I should say. I don't think that they would have actually expressed that they were frustrated with me, but mm-hmm. I felt frustration about that being the message that would be first experienced by the audience. Got it. Um, originally, it was called Year of the Dog. Mm. And, um, fun fact, it is the year of the dog, 2018. <laughs> uh, but 
I originally called it that because I was born in 1994, which is Year of the Dog. And mm-hmm. it, I was really trying to reach out to a lot of kids like my age that I had seen doing things that I Fair enough. Yeah. don't agree with, but really respect. Got it. Um, yeah, so mental, I'm mm-hmm. very scattered. <laughs> uh, that's why I do experimental film. Right, right. That's also why I'm a director. I can listen to myself talk. <laughs> <laughs> and people just throw great ideas that, at me. <laughs> that is a great benefit. I can that is imagine. a great benefit. Um, but my actresses, all of them, young to old, the, the sister mm-hmm. played by Jadelyn Torres, she was the best. She was the strongest out of all of us on the set. I could believe that. Yeah. Yes, yes. She was the most headstrong. Um, definitely rehearsing, it helped mm-hmm. a lot to overcome sort of like that original shakenness that you yeah. might feel when you when you would first read the script. Um, it also helped that we improv a lot. Mm-hmm. And we worked off those improvisations. Right. Um because I originally wrote a lot of the visuals and not so much of the dialogue. Mm. And I would say that that intro, that overture that you hear in the beginning, yeah, it was just, I mean, I was heavily influenced by a member of my class uh, at Brooklyn College Film School to write sort of like a poem to express and in- introduce the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was very hard. Because I got to really realize what I wanted to say, yeah. which was, uh, youth is not to be wasted. And, and it's like they say, youth is wasted on the young. Exactly. And I felt like at one point I was wasting my youth, doing awful things. Um, yeah. We all kind of go through different phases in that growing up. Yes, yes we do. Um, and... The hardest thing for me now, even though I, I've never felt that way, because I felt like I never had a right to feel that way, mm-hmm. is how to communicate and trying to help people right. who are in a predicament. Yeah. Um, and I'm not trying to judge them. Got it. Um, I'm not trying to wish ill upon them. Mm. Which is, I mean, it's hard times, so there's this very guarded feeling I got but when I would see people watch the film like when we screened the film first at Bammer Cinemas yeah yeah uh this past spring it was great I had I think the best ovation (laughs) (laughs) of my showcase I think I had the best ovation uh but I mean it was amazing how people can really even express what they like about the film almost and I understood why I feel like I understand why I, yeah or I feel that I feel why but I just can't understand why we can't talk about whatever the elephant in the room is that white brings to your psyche right, right. um because I mean it's uh there's so much that we're still dealing with and mm-hmm. it's only gotten stronger since I wrote it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yes so I mean, I'm very proud of my whole team. Mm -hmm. Uh, We stuck together and created something amazing. I think that that was not the challenge at all, was getting my crew on board. We rehearsed, we threw out great ideas, like for the building collapse, we rehearsed that, um, like, endlessly. And... It was very dirty in the in the studio, <laughs> in the school. Bless their hearts, they are so patient with us. You know, uh, everyone was very patient with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peer space, thank you, peerspace dot com. They helped us find the the office, right. the office location. Yep. They were great. We let them know exactly what was going on. So everyone was very open. Um, and that's kind of what held it together in the end of production was that we knew whatever the issue was, and there were issues, mm-hmm. um, that we could kind of circumvent them in some way. And it turned out that the end is cut was the tightest cut. And then I just shot that uh, the <laughs> overture and it all came together. And it was like the end of a three-year headache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can only imagine. It was great. It was great. 
and I really I talked to my lead actress about about it endlessly and she looked at the footage afterwards and just a lot of us just grew a lot closer Mm -hmm. Um, I'm still working with some of them as well and that's awesome yeah they've gone on to do bigger and better things some of the actors Um, so I feel like if this meant something at that point in time and people are still growing from it you know, hopefully they're growing from this and they're not trying to grow <laughs> past it. Uh, <laughs> then that's, then, you know, I'm doing my job as a filmmaker to, mm-hmm. to open up some blockages Definitely. in our media. Right, yeah. for sure. Now, kind of on the flip side of that original challenges question, what were some of your favorite parts of the filmmaking process for this? Oh, my favorite part was finishing the script and finishing editing. Ooh, I can only imagine. Shooting was a blur. It was just like a rush of adrenaline for a weekend. So. Yeah, I could I could believe that. Yeah. But wait, it was all shot over the course of a weekend? Pretty much. Got and it. then we did the beach scenes when it got a little bit warmer. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was originally going to be a little part in there about the parents, but it didn't work out. So I have like some other footage that I still haven't touched. But I can make another little short, like, music video out of <laughs> if I wanted to put out a DVD or a little something else. Um, the best part about, like, connected to the content yeah, um, was feeling like I had done something to better an awful situation. I've been in multiracial relationships before, mm-hmm. and it has been painful if we couldn't ourselves yeah. out there in the public and it has mm-hmm. actually affected the long term relationship as well so I mean that's that's just a part of the film exactly it's, it's not even the whole film I know like but. that's and that was one thing I liked about the film there was just so many themes and issues explored but like not but none of them was just like hand over fist, like, hammered into you either, yes, so I thought... because I don't believe that in this day and age that we should be ham over, hand over fisting every little thing that is not conservative. Right, exactly. Um, I don't believe in saying that liberalism is bad. I don't believe it in saying that political correctness is bad. Mm-hmm. If you have great logic and sound reasoning to back up what you're saying then I think that we as a people should have the sense to realize what you're saying is valid mm-hmm. and move on, apply, apply the lessons to our lives. Right, even if we don't, maybe not necessarily agree with it. Exactly. So let's not get into every cocaine issue because uh, that's yeah. distracting. Exactly. I'm focusing on millennials and how mm-hmm. we, like, just, you know, moving forward, there's so many, so many valid, beautiful people out there with... Right. A drug issue, um, you know, and that only pushes you away from your loved ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does nothing else <laughs> but inhibit your everything great about you. Absolutely. Now, the beauty of white that I thought, and really, this could, this argument could be made for all of experimental film, but the beauty of it is that I think everyone can kind of get something different out of it but they could see something it's like oh i got that message out of it and someone else could say oh i got that message out of it and you know maybe one isn't necessarily more than the other but as the creator of it is there just one message you wanted to get across with it you know and we've covered a lot of different things here. yes yes uh <laughs> and maybe and maybe there isn't um don't do cocaine fair enough you heard it here, folks. So, Francis, what's next for you? What's on the horizon? Uh, what's next for me is my next film. Um, I've been toying with the idea of writing something called Black. Interesting. Yes, just Black. Got it. Yeah. So, any, any other things beyond that? or It's taking a while to write. Mm. Lots of poetry has come out of it, but... Interesting, okay. Not so much a script yet. Fair enough. 
It is interesting because um, as I'm kind of like researching my own mind for ideas mm-hmm. for what I would say, uh, I've thought about Islamophobia. Yeah. I've thought about just like fear disease in general. Yeah. Um, and I've also thought a lot about like the passing of some very great people in the past few years. Mm. Um, so, and also I'm trying to avoid morbi- morbidity. I'm trying to... And hard to do in this day and age, yes. let's be real. Yes, it is. It is hard. I mean, rest all those beautiful, peaceful souls and mm-hmm. some other just completely combative people yeah. who have passed. And, Absolutely. You know, that's, uh, like I said, to avoid morbidity. Like, what does that mean? You know, <laughs> this is a time, not, not to be apocalyptic or anything, but this is a time to really... Everything is cyclical, so yeah. it's a time to really consider meaningfulness. Yeah. Um, and maybe a little less like hippy dippy bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got that it. Has gotten us past the I don't know mm. past era, the past few eras. So. Yeah, I'm trying to find something, some some good common ground. Got it. Uh, maybe maybe I'll collaborate with some people. Yeah, that's how you get things done, honestly. Exactly. That is exactly how you get things done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but if people wanted to follow your work and you know, keep tabs on what you're doing, which you absolutely should, where would they go? They would go to vimeo.com backslash Francis Russell, which is F-R-A-N-C-E-S-R-U-S-S-E-L-L. That is, again, vimeo.com backslash Francis Russell. <laughs> and I will put a link to that in the description of this video below. So, listen, that's about all I have. Listen, Francis, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with of me. Course. This is a lot of fun. Yes, it was great. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And you all, thank you for tuning in. I hope you liked our discussion. If you haven't seen White yet, then, well, you shouldn't have watched this video. Please but if you have, see it. yes, please go, leave and go watch it. But until next time, guys, you're watching Demo Reel. <laughs>